Good afternoon, and, and thank you all for joining us, both Danny and I, at this presentation this afternoon. What we want to do is really just, you know, give you a, an, a, an overview of the agenda. Uh, what we're really going to be talking about today is, you know, today's construction landscape, legacy and digital workflows, some the business value that we can bring to the table from Locust View, and an overview of, of Locust View, and the and we'll answer any questions and, that that you may have. Um, infrastructure spending is growing leaps and bounds throughout the uh, throughout the United States, and it's funded through through a significant amount of federal stimulus spending. Uh, right now, we have a pretty significant base load of routine capital construction that every utility is experiencing, and we've been working with for the past number of decades. I don't want to give my age away, but many decades. Um, there's also been a, a tremendous growth in distribution and construction. You know, those increase, you know, we've, we're seeing increases in, in electric heating and, and cooking. We're seeing uh, the, fu the future of electric vehicle charging stations, both commercial and residential. Uh, there's a whole um, um, sig significant amount of activity going on with system hardening, undergrounding of the overhead electric system. And of course, we're just spending a significant amount of, of effort and, and projects to just improve system resilience because of the various issues associated with global warming and the impacts they're having you know, throughout, the, uh, th throughout the United States and abroad. One of the um, items we really want to talk about is this concept of digitization in, in, in construction, which is kind of lagging significantly for utilities. Um, we've been working recently with uh, reports from McKinsey, and when you look at the McKinsey descriptions and, and graphics, it shows that utilities are kind of in the middle of their digitization curve. And that's true in a lot of respects. You know, utilities are using a lot of technology for uh, graphic design, um, work management systems, GIS, uh, SCADA, ADMS, and so you're seeing a lot of technology at the beginning of the process and at the end of the process. Where things really kind of fall apart in, in the Achilles heel of this entire process is the manual reporting by construction organizations. And if you look at the McKinsey report, construction is always in the lower quadrant of, of the digitization cycle. And when you look at the colorful chart on the right, you can see that construction is down at the bottom with more red than anyone really wants to see. Um, so what's happening is because we're doing heavy manual processing of as building and, and data collection from the fields, um, we're seeing that the data requirements that utilities have today are barely being met by our construction folks. And as we move forward into the realm of ADMS and, and higher engineering tools for, for the processing and, and analysis of data, um, today's methods will, will never meet those particular needs. So the uh, future high fidelity data that's required for ADMS is going to require us to come up with a better solution in order to capture that information and make those future investments pay off. And what I'd like to do is just take a look at our typical construction workflow. And I've kind of touched on a couple of these items already, but when you look at the first half, the, the, the pre-field activity, engineers and designers are using work or creating work orders using AutoCAD, maybe graphic work design, could be just a bill of material, a sketch, a hand-drawn sketch, or even a you know, some map clipped out of your GIS or, or, or mapping system. And then that file is put together in a, literally in a manila folder and it's provided to the crew, you know, via paper processing. When you get into the field, field crews are stuck really in the 1950s, you know, as-built data capture world. They use paper and a Sharpie to, to really document what they've done. And, and when you think about it, you know, we hire construction crews to build our electric system. Those uh, men and women know how to set a pole, run wire, hang a transformer, dig a trench to install you know, gas facilities and what have you. 
And those guys and gals are working in extreme conditions. Um, I don't think anyone who's ever watched a, a lineman work would envies them working up on the top of a pole, possibly in a bucket, when it's 100 degrees out or it's sub-zero out, and they're trying to do repairs and, 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 and update and fix the system. Um, those, that's what they do, that's the environment they work in. And when we think about it, we, we hire them for their skills. But one of the skills is that we never think about is being able to describe data. Um, we don't hire them for that, but yet we depend on their ability to document as built changes successfully. And when you look at the back office, you know, you have, by the time those construction folders come back to the back office, uh, the clerical staff and the GIS editors must carefully review and look at the, the work order packages that come back. Um, I was a manager of a GIS application for nearly 20 years. The nightmare that I experienced every day was seeing work order packages coming back to me anywhere from two to six months behind when the work was actually done. And the data in them were always difficult to, to read and to find. Like I said, a, a guy working in 100 degree weather, scribbling with a Sharpie on the back of a form or the back of a napkin, it does not do well for when you're trying to read and interpret that data and then get it updated into your work management system or your GIS system. I'm gonna jump. So when I think about it, how does this really impact you? You know, there are your traditional stakeholders and when we talk about traditional stakeholders, we're thinking about the engineers and analysts who need to use this, this data to do their design and, and analysis work and, and new work order development. We look at the field crews and contractors who really need to have reliable GIS information and, and asset information at their fingertips. The worst thing in the world is to send a map out with a construction crew that doesn't reflect what's out in the field. Um, I, I apologize right now, but you know, I've, many a times I heard these maps suck. And it happens because we don't get the information into GIS. We fail to get the work orders in in a timely fashion. We fail to update that information effectively and clearly into the GIS system. And for that matter, even into the work management system because decisions are made and designs are, are based on what's in the work management system as well. So, those are all the typical people that we always think about, but there are a whole host of non-traditional stakeholders, and those are the people in finance, accounting, and even in our executive realm. Um, when you think about it, if the company books don't reflect the true value of the company, how can we go out to the markets and to, to Wall Street and, and borrow funds and get investors to invest in our companies if we can't fully guarantee what we're the assets that are in our asset repository or our system of record. Um, when you think about the fact that utilities will take weeks or months, and my personal experience through many years is that you know those work orders can take anywhere from two to five months to get through. All during that, that time, they are uh, receiving CWIP and AFUDC charges. So when you think about the cost of that work order, it's not the original estimate of you know five, seven, ten thousand dollars, but it's also the cost of money and the cost of maintaining that you know those work orders and and paying the uh, you know the interest on them for months at a time. So that the CWIP and AFUDC levels often stay higher than they should be, and we are unable to really close those jobs out and start getting. Um, returns on our um, investment through rate recovery. Finally, another issue associated with this is OMS. Now, if OMS doesn't have the current and exact uh, configuration of the circuits of the, of the con connected model, then all of their predictions and, and estimates of when customers will be back and all of, the, all of the reliability statistics that are created also become suspect. So, how can we resolve this? At Locust View, we've developed this concept of called digital construction management. And basically what that means is we are looking to digitize from the beginning to the end of how that information is sent out to the field, data collected in the field, and ultimately sent back to the um, systems of record. 
And we do this uh, by taking all, any and all of the design information that comes from your engineering uh, analysts and, and your planners and, and designers, we take that information digitally and send it out to the, to the field um, using the Locust View mobile application. In that application, the data is there immediately. Any and all documents that you need to make that work order work appropriately, like, like permits, um, OSHA inspections, uh, safety uh, briefs and what have you, all of that data can be collected s easily through this, through the Locus View web application. And as the day progresses, you can use this application and this tool to easily capture uh, through scanning technology and, and or direct entry, um, information about the assets that you're installing, about the pole, about the transformer, the wire, what have you. That information is then collected through uh, the use of scanning in technology, and we're able to not only collect the basic information that we're barely getting today based on our 1950s technology, but we're also able to get significantly more data because we're able to read through barcode scanning significant more information about the devices, about the equipment that we're installing, which will help as we move forward with ADMS and the, and the data hungry needs of those types of uh, applications. Once the work is, as the work is being produced in the field, the information is sent up to the web and is then made visible to the supervision in the home office using the Locust View web solution. So as the crews are making updates or making changes to the design or, or dealing with any types of issues, the supervisor responsible for that job can see it in the back office. So in the event that there's some question, there's some issue, the uh, crews can communicate directly with the supervisor. If there are extras that are needed, if there's a change in the design, that supervisor can make that approval instantly and that information goes back to the crew and then they're able to, to continue the, the completion of the job. Um, and what this ultimately does is it takes the current two to five month process down to two to four days. Um, and again, once the, the uh, work order is approved, it can then go digitally into your work management system and digitally directly into your GIS system. So now you are taking the entire um, handling, uh, paper handling process of getting the information from the field to the supervisor, to the local clerk, to the local GIS editor, all of those with its own in inherent delays and, and, and just backlog processing and the like. So like I said, we can cut the, the process time from months to days. And um, this gives the ability uh, for us to digitally update all, all those systems of record and GIS, ensuring that all of that data is consistent between the two sets of systems, avoiding the finger pointing of which system is right and when if the work management system isn't updated with true actual you know, field activity versus what's in GIS. I'll take over where Bob left off and really just drive home who we are and what we do and, and what you can do to learn more about us. So, uh, you know, Locust View, we were founded in 2014 out of a, a deep industry and utility partnership around R&D, around solving problems for that construction crew end user persona. Uh, you can see we're an Esri Silver partner. We serve electric, gas, and telecom uh, verticals. But really what we're proudest of is the success of our customers. Over 5,000 crews worldwide on a daily basis using this technology to digitize their construction. And I think the biggest number is really 161,000 projects in 2021 alone were digitally constructed using Locust Use technology. That accounts for almost $12 billion in capital expense. And, and it, really drives, it really drives who we are and what we do. We're growing like crazy. We're about 200, uh, 200 employees, uh, very financially sound, and, and moving forward, really tackling this really difficult problem for utilities. And our business vision isn't just around digital ads building. It's really about all the other uh, data that goes out to the field, all the other personas that are involved in construction data collection, and, and, and disseminating this information to the other stakeholders on the back end. It's really this idea of a digital construction management platform or a hub that involves not just those traditional stakeholders that Bob talked about, but those forgotten stakeholders that really have a lot at stake here. 
What's different than from what we do compared to lots of other mapping companies out there? We're a product company and we are laser focused on that construction crew user persona and the contractors, which is a really difficult uh, persona to crack. If you're not giving them an application that makes their job easier in the field, they just won't use it. So we have focused 100% on that field crew persona and we really bring their feedback into our product and we productize and develop these industry best practices. And that's really what, what makes us uh, uh, special. So to give a little more of a visual view, I know it's a bit of an eye chart from where you're all sitting. You know, typically people think of as building as you know, scribbling on a map about where you put that pole or where you dug the trench and they call it good. And, and it's really that, uh, they really say, you know, it's just about the mapping. It's just about a couple attributes and, and it's just about the, the crews and then the GIS people on the back end. But we take a more broad view where we look at role-based persona-based digital construction management, where there are things that the inspector does when they receive that digital um, job packet. There are things that the foreman grew around digital as-building and digital closing package that is different than as-building. And then on the supervisor and management side, these personas are really working throughout that entire uh, workflow from the, the pre-construction, from execution, all the way to closeout. And this is really what broadens the idea of what we do in the field. It's not just about points and lines on a map, it's about materials, compatible units, design, uh, permits, everything that goes into construction in the field. So, and we're not just a software company. Our offering is a turnkey offering where we package together the software, hardware, and managed services to make sure the construction crews and their contractors have the entire package that they need with a commercial model that fits their, their drive. Now, a lot of people can claim, well, we sell software and hardware as well. Our deep partnerships with our hardware partners ensure that a layperson on a construction crew can capture survey grade high accuracy GPS and it's invisible to them. They don't have to know how to count how many satellites or what their RDOP and PDOP is. They don't even know how to spell that stuff and they shouldn't because it's not their job. They need to be able to collect something quickly and easily in the field that makes their jobs better and easier and this is the package that does it for them. Now. Uh, you can listen to us and we can beat our chest about how, how awesome we are, but we're really proud of, of our utilities in the world that are using this. We have over 40 deployed utilities throughout the world using this on a daily basis. But the hardest part that we cracked is 180 of their contractors are using our solution on a daily basis. And that, that is a really, uh, a really broad area that is, that is growing, growing really well for us.